Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. Today I want to share some of my favorite products that I've been using throughout 2019. Not just my favorite actually, but what I consider the best products of 2019. But what makes them the best? Well, I consider a product that I've used non-stop, almost religiously throughout the year to be one of the best products, but also the products that have made the biggest difference to my skin, no matter how long I've been using them, could be one of the best products of 2019. So yes, let's move on to the best of 2019. There's a few I'm going to quickly skim through and not go into too much detail about because if you've been watching my channel for the last year, the last six months, the last two months even, you would have seen these products a lot. So some quick mentions and some of the best products, of course, starting with the Ordinary's Niacinamide. This really helped reduce the appearance of pores on my face, obviously, <laughs> reducing redness and overall evening out my skin tone. The Cosrx Mela 14 White Ampoule is my go-to ampoule for um, dark spots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but again, also just evening out my skin tone. It's a product that I've actually used 2018, 2019, and will continue to use in 2020 because it's so, so good. Next is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence 2019 edition. My favorite sunscreen, lightweight, doesn't leave a greasy film on my skin, yet it's slightly moisturizing, and it's so easy to reapply throughout the day. Leaves no white cast, no streaks, so you can just apply it without even looking in the mirror. I love it, and I bulk by this. And finally, from the quick mentions, the Cosrx Galactomyces Alcohol-Free Toner, a toner that feels like water on the skin. I've been spraying this on my face straight out of the shower. It keeps me nicely hydrated, stops any tight feeling, as well as prepping my skin for the rest of my routine. I just love this. I feel like it makes such a difference. For me, really, it's the spray nozzle and the mix of that kind of like Galactomyces, which makes it like a hybrid toner essence that makes this a winner for me. Okay, so let's move on to the products that I've been using nonstop, but I probably haven't talked about a lot. No real reason. I guess they just don't fit into any format. We'll start off with the Glossier at Balm.com. In my brand review, Glossier's products were overall quite disappointing. Overly fragranced basics that were a bit on the pricey side for basics. So it's no wonder that their what is essentially flavoured Vaseline stuck out as a favourite for me, stood out as one of their better products. As I mentioned, this is what it is. It's smelly, coloured, fragrant, pretty overpriced Vaseline, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It makes me happy. It makes my lips feel soft. It makes it look nice and plump as well. My lips actually haven't felt dry since using this um, when I first started purchasing them. I use it in the morning. I layer it up heavily in the evening. They do have the slightest tint to them. You can actually barely see the tint. I would have liked a few of them to be a little bit more tinted, especially the grape and the cherry, but the flavors are so, so good. And if you're in the market for a slightly overpriced bougie version of Vaseline, this is a winner for me. I absolutely love it. As I mentioned, this isn't one of the most fanciest products I've been using, but it's a product that once I bought it, I have been using non-stop day and night. So that's why it's in this list. There's no volume in my hair whatsoever. Next up is Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid. I've only been using this product for just over a month, but within that short time frame, it's made the biggest difference to my skin than any other product I've used throughout 2019. We know I have very mild rosacea, and azelaic acid is the one thing that not only came highly recommended, but when I was doing my research, it's the one um, ingredient that kept popping up. It was just everywhere, and azelaic acid has not only toned down the redness on my cheeks, um, on here, I had a bit of redness around here that's really, really dying down. This dark spot that's like getting lighter, but it's also helped control breakouts in general on my face as well. My redness was actually getting to the point where I was like, I'm gonna have to just wear makeup all the time. I'm gonna have to learn how to cover this up. But azelaic acid has really come to my rescue um, and has pretty much just saved my face. This kind of opened the doors for me to experiment with more Paula's Choice products. Um, I had a, not a bad experience with the niacinamide booster, but I've been so loyal to the Ordinary's niacinamide and seen such great results. When I used the booster, I was a little bit disappointed, but having used their azelaic acid and a few more products that I'll talk about in a future video, um, including their retin, 
retinol. I'm really starting to love the simplicity of the products and the fact that they just work as well. Next up is the By Wish Trend Acid Duo Hibiscus 63 Cream. This is a product that's in my Wish Trend collaboration box, my winter skin savers, which is still available, etc, etc. I'll leave the link as a pinned comment. So when I posted the video about my um, winter savers box in collaboration with Wish Trend, a few people asked me if I actually picked the products. And yeah, the answer is of course. So this Acid Duo Cream in particular I've been using since August, beginning of August. And I immediately fell in love with it, but I didn't want to talk about it because I wanted to save it for this box. So there was a few, as I mentioned, surprising items in it. So yeah, I've wanted to talk about this product for such a long time. So this is basically an exfoliating moisturizer. It has pH, PHA and LHA in. And to put it very, very simply, um, these are gentler versions of AHA and BHA. It's kind of like the next generation. Um, so coming into winter, I knew ahead of time that my skin gets very sensitive, very irritated, especially when I use AHAs and BHAs, but you still want that good exfoliation. And a lot of feedback I got was that people were almost scared of using an exfoliating toner. I think because of the words acids are thrown around here and there, which is what they are, but they're good acids. You know, people can't sell something that's gonna rip your skin off. Um, so yeah, I thought this was a good idea and I love it. I've been able to get a gentle exfoliation throughout these winter months, even with my rosacea, even with my ruined skin barrier. I've been able to use these products with absolutely no irritation whatsoever. I love this. Even when my skin's back to normal, this is a product I'm gonna carry on using because I just feel like it's had such a good effect on my skin. Next up, we have another whole kind of like line, not brand, but line. And this is the Dear Claire's Fundamental line. I remember when Wish Trends started posting about their Fundamental line on their Instagram. And purely from the packaging, I was like, I want this before I even knew what it was about. But that's because I feel like the packaging um, is perfect. It lets you know exactly what the products are gonna do, you know? I think the packaging is perfect. Then, then the look at the hydration and the the moisture and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted this whole line. I was of course lucky enough to be sent it. The fundamental products are like products I've not used before with the weirdest, nicest hybrid of lightweight and moisture. <laughs> it's, it's very odd. So their fundamental line focuses on hydration and moisture, repairing the skin and prevention. And you can really feel this throughout the whole line. The watery oil drops really do hydrate the skin. They have this like fresh watery feeling to them, but then they also have this like oil-like consistency yeah, it doesn't leave you with like a greasy film on your face or um, like a heavy feeling either. As someone with oily dehydrated skin in the winter, then oily going into summer, these are like ideal products for me. For someone who isn't really an eye cream fan or user, the Eye Awakening Gel has been used nearly every single day since I managed to get my hands on it. Like many other eye creams, this product claims to get rid of dark circles. And whilst it doesn't really, what it's really, really good at is de-puffing the under eye area. It brings like a lightness and a freshness um, look wise to the under eye area and does give the impression of lighter under eyes. It just smooths and cools the skin under your face, eyes. What? And yeah, you kind of just get like this reflection under the eyes that bounce back that light. And this, I used this before I got fillers under my eyes. So um, I'm still using it. Um, but even then it was such a good product. They did send me the other eye cream in the fundamental line and I haven't touched that yet. I don't actually know where it is. I should look for that. And finally the ample mist from that um, line. I have been spraying this on my face like it's never gonna run out. I've been using this every morning and afternoon. So basically before I walk the dog, it's quite early in the morning. I don't have time to shower and get ready, then go out. And I'll usually walk the dog, come back, then get ready. But in the morning, especially with these colder months, you're, my skin feels tight and dehydrated. And going out in this weather, I need a bit of protection on my face. So I've been spraying this ample mist like very generously over my skin. I get an instant like hydrated feeling. My skin stops feeling tight. For the 30 minutes that I'm out walking the dog in the morning, um, my skin just feels protected and nourished. The fundamental line is packed with antioxidants as well. Um, the green tea water, I think it is in there. Um, it makes such a big difference to the brightness of my skin. It's a weird line of products that I feel is perfect for all year round, just because it does so much, but so lightly. Yet yeah, it moisturizes and hydrates enough. It's really odd, you have to try it. <laughs> and my final product in the best of 2019 lineup is the I'm From Honey Mask. I'm From is quickly becoming one of my favorite, uh, no, it, it pretty much already is one of my favorite brands. Their Honey Wash Off Mask is the most moisturizing mask I've ever ever used. Usually when it comes to moisturizing masks that you have to wash off, I'm like, mm, what's the point? It's kind of counterproductive. You know, you're giving your skin all this moisturizer and then you interrupt it with water again. It's a little bit like, what is the point? And you're usually left with like normal feeling skin. But this mask, even when washed off, your skin feels um, 
plump and moisturized and soft after. It smells amazing, probably because there's like 38.7% of actual honey in there. Honey is of course moisturizing, but you have loads of other moisturizing ingredients in there. You have quite a few oils, you have glycerin, you have jojoba oil, you also have butylene glycol. Oh, and snail secretion filtrate in there. So all good ingredients with moisturizing properties. It's just such a nice moisturizing mask. Like you feel like you can feel the benefit of every single ingredient in that mask. Most of the honey line I'm actually enjoying a lot of you have asked me about the cream. Um, I got the cream and the serum. They're good. They're they're very fine. <laughs> they're very, very moisturizing. So like the serum's good at, at nighttime. And the honey glow cream has like this nice iridescent shine to it. They do both, however, contain cinnamon, which is like a known irritant. My skin hasn't reacted to it yet, and I don't believe it's in a huge amount. So yeah, it's a bit odd one. I like these products. I don't love them. I love the mask, but the moisturizer and serum not favorites of mine, but I do like the products. Oh my God, I nearly forgot one more. Um, the Perito Centella Green Level Sun SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. Unscented and scented version, I guess. I've been using both. I had no problem with the scented version personally, but when they launched the unscented with no essential oils, there's an unscented version. I'm gonna pick that over the scented. I love this, a broad spectrum sunscreen. It feels nice and light on my oily skin. It feels comfortable on the skin as well. Like I got it on now actually. It's just like nice and glowy. No white cast, no stickiness. This is the sunscreen that sometimes I wear out and people are like, are you wearing makeup? I'm like, no, it's just like this like um, sunscreen makes me look really like glowy. It's just a good sunscreen. It's a little bit difficult to apply. Like you have to take a lot of effort to rub and pat it in properly. So this is a sunscreen I'll put on if I'm just going out for a few hours or like on an overcast day, you know, um, but I have been using it. This and the Bure one have been like sharing responsibility as my go-to sunscreens throughout this year. So yeah, I'd highly, highly highly recommend it. Let me know if any of these are your favorites as well. It's an odd bunch this year. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I buy a lot of these products with like minimal expectations. Um, and a lot of these products I didn't think I'd be using as much as I do. But yeah, they are by far my most used and most liked products. Sunday's video is all about brands that I'm gonna start using and I think you should take a look at going into 2020. Brands I'm excited about exploring a little bit more next year. So stay tuned for that. Um, but that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.